After an uneven start, the Assassin's Creed series is finding its footing in its second chapter. It would seem that the developers at Ubisoft Montreal have put considerable thought into how to bring some color and depth to the detailed and occasionally brilliant sketch work provided by the original Assassin's Creed, and that effort has paid off generously. If you're not already familiar with the high concept intricacies of the original Assassin's Creed, you may want to read up before jumping in here. Assassin's Creed 2 makes some token efforts to catch up new players, but after a quick summary reel about the war between the Templars and the Assassins, the Animus, and the role that Desmond Miles plays in this hot mess, it picks right back up with the final shot from the first game and doesn't look back. We have to go. Lucy, where have you been? Why did they- Now. After an eventful opening, Desmond quickly jumps back into the Animus to train up, this time accessing the experiences of an ancestor named Ezio Adiatore, a privileged young man living a rambunctious, devil-may-care life in Renaissance-era Italy. Altair was a total badass, no doubt. But he often came off as callous, and there was never any insight into the character. With Ezio, you watch as an incredibly justified vendetta drives him from brash bon vivant to brutal and unrepentant assassin. Ezio is a colorful character, but much of the game's vibrance comes from the cities it takes place in, most notably Florence and Venice, both of which have such incredibly distinctive feels. Not content creating lively, convincing renditions of real places, Assassin's Creed II weaves itself freely into the tumultuous history of Renaissance Italy, linking Ezio's path with real historical figures like the Medici family and Leonardo da Vinci. Madonna Maria. Hello, Leonardo. You won't spend much time at all outside of the animus in Assassin's Creed II, but the game still finds some fun ways to play around with the whole metafictional premise, an angle that's responsible for two of the game's most striking moments. Story-wise, Assassin's Creed II has all the connective tissue of a second act in a trilogy, building on the original while creating more questions than it answers, and setting things up for what should be an interesting part three. It's a me, Mario! The biggest differentiator between Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed II is that there's just so much more stuff to do here. This starts off with Ezio himself, who is generally just a superior specimen. He's more agile than Altair, able to scale buildings more rapidly and gracefully. He's better in a straight-up fight, where the timing's been relaxed a bit, and you're given the additional ability to disarm your foes, making their weapons your own. His dual wrist-mounted blades give him more, and more unflinchingly brutal, assassination opportunities. He's more capable at disappearing into a crowd, able to blend in with any groups of pedestrians wandering the streets, toss out handfuls of coins to create a commotion to distract guards, or simply hire a group of comely courtesans to provide mobile cover. While Ezio has more means by which to dodge security, guards now have more memory of your action. Too much high-profile wetworking will leave you with a notoriety level that makes it harder to get around, though you can then reduce your notoriety level by tearing down wanted signs, bribing heralds, and murdering corrupt city officials. Then there's entirely new elements, like an economic system where the monetary investments you make into the small, dilapidated town surrounding your family villa will pay out dividends that you can spend on new weapons, armor, color schemes for your outfit, and more. Though a certain murder fatigue can set in with the main story path after a while, the game does its best to stave it off with regular changes of scenery and plenty of extracurricular activities. There are thankfully no flags to be collected, though there are still race, courier, and assassination side missions to take on. You'll find labyrinthine tombs that require crackerjack timing and confident command of Ezio's full set of abilities to traverse. Monuments are laced with secret symbols that, when found and activated, met out pieces of a puzzle left behind by a less fortunate animus subject. You'll randomly happen upon pickpockets and enemy couriers that you can hunt down for profit. Most of the time, you don't have to seek out diversion. It's much more likely you'll just naturally get sidetracked on your way to murder someone else. This isn't to say there aren't some grievances to be leveled against Assassin's Creed 2. Like the original, there's too much recycled voice work in the world at large, and if I never again hear the Italian-tinged voice that cries out, Mani, 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 when you toss some coins on the street, it'll be too soon. The semi-auto nature of the way Assassin's Creed's traversal system works is a big part of what makes it feel so slick, but can also backfire on you. Considering Ezio's high-wire lifestyle, it's usually pretty frustrating and calamitous when your intended direction isn't interpreted the way you might hope. <laughs> Lastly, this is, generally speaking, a pretty stunning-looking game, from the scale and detail of the world to Ezio's subtle, deadly movements. 
which makes it that much more surprising that all of the facial animation is as awkward as it is. Look, there's more to it than that, but it'll have to wait. Trust me, okay? I came into Assassin's Creed 2 with a certain qualified affection for the original, and was thoroughly pleased with the lessons the developers learned between the two. Assassin's Creed 2 offers fundamentally the same kinds of thrills as its predecessor. It's just been expanded, streamlined, and overhauled in ways that bring it closer to grace and make it a much easier game to recommend.